Ahisatha and Chai Squis Chastinma and Chaspaus Tali Chast. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Native Wellness Institute Power Hour. Today, we're going to be talking with some beautiful, indigenous, strong, resilient women. And we're going to be discussing the MMIW, the Murdered and Missing Indigenous Women, the Murdered and Missing Indigenous People, um, relatives. There's all different names, but it's the women, the children, that the men that have been murdered and missing. And so to, today, to start off our power hour, I have with me um, one of my really good friends, one of, um, she's, she's a, a beautiful woman who, who is going to share with you her story about her sister. And so I'm just gonna hand it over right now to um, Deborah Garcia. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Deborah Garcia. And um, when my sister went missing, it was in 1988. Um, I was in school at that time. I was going to Eastern Washington University, and <clears throat> I, I literally just grew up over the hill from here in Fairfield, Washington, in a foster family. Um, Tina, my sister, <clears throat> she as well grew up in foster care her, um, her young life, and she lived here on the reservation with our Uncle Felix. And um, he was more or less like a father to her. He has pretty much been a father figure in all of our lives. He, um, it devastated our family so bad in 1988 when this happened to her. Um, over the years, there's been so many things that have happened. And, and so many, uh, so many rumors that go around, but um, like lately, I feel like it's with Levina and, and Dwayne and them doing this MMIW thing that they did was amazing. And I truly hope that it has shined some light upon other people that are going through the same thing as, as my family. And um, I know that all the prayers have helped because I feel at this time, there are some things that are maybe unfolding that could um, be a big breakthrough. I don't know if it's just hearsay, um, but it seems to me that I'm just really hoping that we get answers and are able to put uh, her to rest in our cemetery and it was um she i had recently just asked the flathead tribe to help us get a stone for her with her date of birth and her missing date on it because me and my sister strongly feel that once a person passes there's nothing else on this earth that ever says that you were here except for that stone that we mark people with in a cemetery. And it's been 30 some years and we felt that we were gonna put a stone in our cemetery because she lived here on this reservation pretty much her whole life. And so we were gonna put that in a cemetery over between our mom and her twins that she had. And, um, and can you can you talk a little bit, Debbie, about like that? What how how hard it is because you don't have you don't know where her body is, and that's like been the, probably the hardest thing on it is that we don't know where her body is, and I feel in our Indian traditions that her soul is not at rest, and it cannot be at rest. And I can't go on healing. And even though it is people here on the res that were involved, um, I've learned to forgive. I'm still gonna have to forgive people even for their part in it in order for me to go on mm -hmm. and heal in, in my heart and in my soul. And so that my sister 
can rest if we find her. That's like um, her missing. It's horrible for any family to have to go through. You never get to say goodbye. You never get another hug. You never get another anything with them. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason that this happened, I don't know. And, you know, I don't know if the creator will ever let us know. Um, I believe that, you know, with the years of sobriety that I have had has given me a, a more clear understanding and where people you know like where they come from and what type of people or what type of person I really don't understand what type of person would do this anyway but we all have um, trauma in our life that makes us unfold the way we do in our lives and so we all need some type of healing mm -hmm. we all need some type of healing and I just um, I pray and hope that you know, the others that, that are out there that have this, you know, hit home in their family that, that they can get some kind of answers. And I'm so thankful for uh, you and Dwayne with pushing through and doing, you know, what you guys do, because it's amazing. And it does, it does help healing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give us the answers that we all want. No, but I think it's becoming like nationwide prayer for everybody, mm -hmm. you know, for our, our women and children and, and everything, everybody all together. But this, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you just say, say her name again? And Tina Marie Finley. And she went missing in 1988 on March eighth mm. okay is there anything else you would like to say to people who might be listening and just any last words you want to share with them no just that i i pray we get the answers mm. awesome so i can start healing and forgiving and is there a reward there is a reward the fbi has always had a ten thousand dollar reward re, um, leading to any information of her of her body her recovery yes okay awesome and the fbi is still um it's still an ongoing investigation and even though they closed it like they actually did declare her dead within her tribe so um that part's been taken care of mm -hmm. yeah okay all right so we're gonna um so i'm gonna um, just say, you know, Liam Lynch, thank you, Debbie, for yes, sharing you. your story. And, and I just want to, um, at, at the end of, of the power hour, I'll put a picture up of Tina Marie Finley. And so you can all see that. Um, but at this time, I'm going to hand this, this um, power hour over to Earth Feather Sovereign, and her sister Morningstar means who are warriors in fighting for legislation and fighting for, um, for, for more resources for our tribes in the Pacific Northwest to be able to find the murdered and missing indigenous women and children and men and to bring some healing. And, you know, their, their you know, two sister organization, they did so much for all of the people who, Dwayne, when he did the MMIW bike run, they they gave him blankets and every family who had somebody who was murdered or missing received one of those blankets. And so I just want to hand it over to Earth Feather. I want to thank Debbie for sharing with us today and offer our prayers and our love and our thoughts to her as she moves forward in her healing journey. And we pray that they will one day find Tina Marie Finley. So Earth Feather Sovereign Morning Star, it's on. Um, I'm going to hand it over to you guys now. Why? Go ahead, sister. Why? 
My name is Earth Feather Sovereign. I'm the founder and also advocate for missing and murdered Indigenous women in Washington. Thank you, Levina, for having us here. It's really an honor to be able to be on your, your Zoom session, Power Hour. Sometimes um, we will watch it and we feel so uplifted and inspired. And thank you, Debbie, for um, having the courage, you know, to talk about your sister and, um, you know, our, our prayers go out with you and her and, you know, all your family. And um, Levina, do you happen to have like any smudge or something that you'd be able to um, smudge her off with or something? But um, yeah, I yeah, do. It's so this power hour is um, really, it might be a, <clears throat> a heavy time for all of us. And um, so you're welcome to uh, take a break or light some smudge or, you know, just um, take a moment to breathe. Um, but would you like to say anything, Morningstar? Uh, white hustle halt, white slas, the must uh, My people are the Seals, the Kaina, and the Ogallala Lakota people. My parents are Oyate, Wachinapi, Ampo Wachakapi, we are Yana and Pia Godas. Uh, my given name is Iskini Kafabusaki, Morning Star Woman. My English name is Morning Star. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and have my sister do all this. She wants to do all the speaking, but at the end, I'm going to share a song with all of you. And I'm grateful to be here. Today's a, a new day. It's a blessing to be, be able to come here and be part of this and uh, do the work. Uh, Lim Lim, Levina, Lim Lim, uh, Debbie, I, I, I met your sister a long, long time ago. And uh, every time I see her picture, I remember when I first met her. And um, my heart goes out to you. And uh, I will continue to put the missing and murdered indigenous people in my prayers every day. And I pray that uh, you'll get that closure, you and your family, get that closure. And, uh, white limb to all my relations. Amen. Go ahead, sister. Uh, we would like to also acknowledge um, Duane and Levina uh, last week. We just came back from Washington, D.C. Uh, Levina's husband, Duane, was on a, on a journey, a spiritual journey, um, praying, you know, touching the, the lives of MMI families, you know, across um, the United States from Washington to Washington, D.C., uh, spreading hope and good prayers and good medicine along the way. And when we went to Washington, D.C., we were able to talk with a few, um, you know, representatives. And we also stood with uh, members of tribal council from all over, all over Montana. And um, we were encouraging them, them to pass the VAWA Act. And the VAWA Act of 2021, uh, there's some stipulations in there that, that would help improve, um, you know, Indian country, especially on our mm -hmm. reservation. But um, I'm going to be sharing a PowerPoint with you. It's a pre-recorded PowerPoint. Um, it's about an hour long. And then we'll share a little bit of words afterwards. Um, the PowerPoint is called, What is Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and People? And um, are we going to be uh, able to have a QA? and <laughs> I don't know. It's just us. <laughs> um, but, uh, I, can, I can look at the questions. Like, okay. So, so when we're live on Facebook, like I'll, we'll turn my camera off and then I can look at questions if there's any questions. Okay. All right. Yes. And then if, even if you're watching this at a later time and there's some questions on there, we'll look at them throughout the day and maybe we'll try to answer them for you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen now. 
Um, My name is Earth Feather Sovereign. I am a member of the Colville Confederated Tribes. My mother is Dana Marcelli and my father is Ernest Clark. I am the founder, director, and advocate for missing and murdered Indigenous women in Washington. We are a charity for nonprofit with the state of Washington, not to be confused with missing and murdered Indigenous women's grassroots movement. We want to bring awareness and bring about change to help address the pandemic of missing and murdered Indigenous people. First, I would like to recognize the Medicine Creek Treaty Tribes in which land I currently reside on, as well as all Turtle Island nations that make up North America, from the top of the head of Canada to the tail of Mexico. Today, I am here to help everyone understand why missing and murdered American Indian people is an issue in our communities and how it may affect you too, as well as ways you may show your support and ways you may be able to help. I would like to let everyone know beforehand that there's will be moments where you may feel uncomfortable in my PowerPoint and you are welcome to leave at any time but I encourage you to stay because I believe these uncomfortable conversations will help bring understanding from an indigenous perspective and healing as a collective. So we may all come together as sisters and brothers of our mother earth. One of the first nations communities well known areas of missing and murdered is based in British Columbia on Yellowhead Highway 16 just north of us in Washington state is known as the Highway of Tears. About 18 victims were indigenous from 1969 to 2006. You may Google it to find out more information. This helped to set off an inquiry with the government with 740 testimonies from 215 to 2019, they estimated well over 4,000 missing and murdered indigenous women and girls. Their final report was ruled as genocide. This is a pre-colonization map of the tribal subgroups. These groups are named after the region in which these tribes lived. The tribes are grouped together by language, clothing, habitation, traditions, cultural beliefs, ceremonies, and food structures. It is written, Bartholomew de la Casas, together with additional reports concerning his plea to the king and queen of Spain. Upon observing the nature and manner of the indigenous people of Guanahani, the island that Columbus first visited, their manners are decorous and praiseworthy. They are guileless and honest with no vices among them. They have no thieves or liars among them and they give freely all of that they have. And when they have no more to give, they cry. They are truly as the children of God, Los niños de los indios. 
During the 1400s, India was called Brat. There were no, they were not called Indians and there was no India. Our indigenous people of Turtle Island have pinpointed the beginning of the genocide of indigenous people to the doctrine of discovery, also known as the doctrine of Christian discovery or the doctrine of dominance. Many Americans grow up learning that this continent was discovered by Christopher Columbus. The concept of discovery as if the land was empty prior to arrival of its indigenous inhabitants were somehow less than the explorers. The doctrine of discovery theologically asserted the right to claim the indigenous lands, territories, and resources on behalf of Christendom, believers and followers of Christ, and to subjugate indigenous people around the world. Christopher Columbus discovered that the indigenous people's beauty was worth their weight in gold. He became the first human sex trafficker here in the Americas, selling young girls as young as nine years old. Him and his men annihilated the Guanahani, the Los Niños de los Indios. It was documented through journals that his men raped and murdered them, enslaved them. Some were made to wear their top off body parts around their neck. Babies' heads were even smashed. The Indian Removal Act was signed into law by President Andrew Jackson on May 28, 1830, authorizing the president to grant unsettled lands west of the Mississippi in exchange for Indian lands within existing state borders. A few tribes went peacefully, but many resisted the relocation policy. One of the major tribes, the Cherokee Nation, resisted in leaving their homeland. At this point in time, some of the indigenous people married and had children with the settlers. Some of the children went to school and became educated in colonial understandings. Some made friends with educated and lingual-minded people. In 1828, the Cherokee Nation sought an injunction from the Supreme Court to prevent the state of Georgia from enforcing a series of laws stripping the Cherokee people of their rights and displacing them from their land, asserting that the laws violated treaties the Cherokee had negotiated with the United States. The Cherokee people attempted to write their own constitution and form their own political government. In the case of Cherokee Nation versus Georgia, the court ruled that the Cherokees did not constitute a foreign nation within the meaning of Article 3 of the Constitution, which extended the judicial power of the United States in cases between a state in a foreign nation, and that it was therefore lacked jurisdiction to hear the claim of an Indian nation against the state in which it resided. Even though they are a nation within a nation, the tribes were labeled as domestic dependent nations, not a independent nation. So the court dismissed their cases. Today, tribes can seek military assistance or accept contributions from foreign countries. We have to seek help from the United States. 
this case also established a trust relationship with tribes direct, directly under federal, not state authority. The trust relationship established a government to government relationship between tribes in the United States. The US has a trust responsibility to each tribal government that includes the protection of the sovereign of each tribal government. The Indian Tribal Justice Support Act of 1993, 25 USC section 3601-3631. The Trail of Tears was between 1830 to 1850. They called it Trail of Tears because the soldiers journaled that every child, woman, and man were crying every day sick and elderly were left behind. Many babies were murdered by soldiers along the way. December 5th, 1838, the Cherokee Nation was the last group to head west past the Mississippi River. 12 groups trudged 800 miles over land to west through the cold weather. Crowding diseases, poor sanitation, the lack of food and water made them miserable. Many died. When they reached the Mississippi, they crossed by ferry. The toll was 12 cents, but the Cherokees were charged a dollar per head. Tribes estimated a total of 4 million collectively died during the removal. Here is a newspaper article from the Minnesota State's Winona Daily Republic, Republic Union nomination, September 25th, 1863, placing a bounty on Indians, again, to dehumanize the Indians and proof of the bounty, they brought in heads, scalps, body parts, private parts, if the body was placed on men, I'm sorry, if the bounty was placed on men versus women, they would even skin the bodies. This is where the term red skinned originated from. People would make clothing out of the skins as trophies. The military soon became involved in the bounties. This created the Indian Wars. Richard Pratt thought it would be less expensive to educate the Indians rather than pay the military to kill them. The Carlisle boarding school was the first Indian boarding school that opened on October 6, 1879 and operated for nearly 30 years with a mission to kill the Indian, to save the man. This philosophy meant administrators for students to speak English, wear colonized clothing, and act according to U.S. values and culture. If they practice their culture, ceremonies, or spoke their language, they were severely punished and even executed. Children were ripped out of their parents' hands. Some parents were murdered because they didn't want to let their children go. Children also died escaping and attempting to travel hundreds of miles back to their families. Children also died due to crowding, disease, poor sanitation, and the lack of food. Children were also physically and sexually abused. Recently, in British Columbia, Canada, 215 unmarked graves were found. 
most likely murdered by boarding school staff because you don't unmark graves unless you're hiding something. Today, the US and Canada found up to 6,509 and counting remains of boarding school children. My mother went to St. Mary's Mission located on the Colville Reservation here in Washington State. She was there for 10 years. She was raised by Catholic Jesuits, priests and nuns. She was also physically and sexually abused. And there were about 14 boarding schools in Washington State. The 1887 Dawes Act allotted reservation land to individual Indians and units of 40 to 160 acres. Lands that remained after allotment was to be sold to whites to pay for Indian education. The Dawes Act was supposed to encourage Indians to become farmers. Some men were away in a war and did not receive land. The same instance during enrollment on reservations when we're away in war and we're not enrolled in their tribe. American Indians are the only race that go by blood quantum, like horses or dog breeds. When I was born, I was not given land, nor did I inherit any of the land. Other acts and laws that impacted American Indians. The United States grants American Indian citizenship June 2nd, 1924. We were not seen as human beings until then. Public Law 280, 1953 is a federal law of the United States established a method whereby states may assume jurisdiction over reservation Indians. The state rarely arrests non-tribal. Indian Re Relocation Act of 1956 provided job training and education opportunities off reservation. Many government institutions didn't follow through with pay, leaving tribal members stuck off reservation. And the ones that were paid were paid way below average of what a white person or a black person would have been paid. The Indian Child Welfare Act 1978. State Children Protective Services was taking children from their families, adopting them out to non-Indians off reservation for something as minimal as dirty dishes or recreational drinking. This act is made to protect Indian children, keeping them with tribal families. American Indian Religious Freedom Act, 1978. Prior to 1978, it was illegal for American Indians to practice their culture, traditions, and ceremonies. Also in 1978, the Supreme Court decision Oliphant versus Suquamish case decided that Indian tribal courts have no criminal jurisdiction over non-Indians. Congress partially abrogated the Supreme Court's Oliphant decision by enacting the Violence Against Women's Reauthorization Act of 2013, which recognizes the criminal jurisdiction of tribes over non-Indian perpetrators of domestic violence that occur on reservations when the victim is Indian. 
due to VAWA 2013, we learned that the murder rate for Native American women is 10 times the national average. VAWA 2021 will overturn the Oliphant decision as it pertains to criminal jurisdiction over tribes, over crimes of stalking, sexual assault, sex trafficking, child abuse, obstruction of justice, and assault on law enforcement and correction officers in cases involving non-Native perpetrators. The VAWA Act of 2013 only pertained to intimate partner violence. It didn't pertain to um, strangers, but the VAWA 2021 will make it that tribes are able to arrest um, strangers that are non-tribal. And here we are, Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women in Washington. Uh, we also have available a presentation of how Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women in Washington came to be. Um, that is in a different PowerPoint. Missing people in the United States um, and CIC reported 20 in 2020, the most recent report, that 543,018 missing people. Of those, 268,884 are women. This is of all races and nationalities that are here on the United States. 274,057 are men, and of the 543,000, 365,348 are children, and 77 are unknown. And it could be unknown because maybe they found a foot or a hand, and um, they're not able to determine the sex of the person. NCIC also reported in 2020 that 9,575 missing Native Americans. Of the 9,000, 7,062 are missing Native children. Of the 9,000, 5,295 are missing Native women and girls. Of the 9,000, 4,200 and 76 are missing Native men and boys, and four are unknown. And um, NCIC does not report on um, our true spirits, our LGBTQ plus community. The Washington State Report in 2021 reports 98 missing Native Americans. Of the 98, 33 are missing Native children. Of the 98, 45 are missing Native women and girls. Of the 98, 53 are missing Native men and boys. And again, Washington State Patrol doesn't report on two spirits in LGBTQ. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC report, homicide is the third leading cause of death of Native women 10 to 24 years old. Homicide is the third leading cause of death for Native American men 10 to 34 years old. Washington state has 29 federally recognized tribes and make up 1.3% of the population, but 5.5% of the missing cases. Yakima Nation is the fourth leading reservation with the most missing murdered indigenous women open cases with 32 Native women that the FBI reported. 
71% of Native Americans live off reservation and in urban areas. Washington State has the second most open missing Native American women cases with NamUs. Seattle, Washington has the highest open cases with 45 reported and 11 unreported missing Native women and our girls, the Urban Indian Health Institute, with their Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls Report in 2018. What leave, leaves Native Americans vulnerable? While racial inequity, not to be confused with equality or diversity, lost culture and traditions, poor health care, high infant mortality rates, poor education, 80% unemployment rates, poverty. Reservations have third world living conditions, high prison rates, high suicide rates, domestic violence, lateral violence, alcohol use, drug use, child protective services, also called children and family services, ICWA or LICWA. So today, what's the problem? We believe our society has a lack of education in regards to our indigenous Native American American Indian people. Growing up in public school system, we are taught in history that the history of the United States from a colonial perspective we are taught that Christopher Columbus discovered America, that the American Indians were killed in the Indian Wars, that we won. Now there remains are our artifacts like the dinosaurs. We are taught that the American Indians were savages, killers, and were not to be trusted. Or, we were romanticized American Indians. We were taught that Thanksgiving was peaceful, which it was not, and actually stemmed from pilgrims murdering the Pequot people. We were also taught that it was okay to dress up like American Indians and appropriate their culture because they didn't exist. And before 1978, American Indians, Native Americans, Alaska Natives were not allowed to practice their culture, traditions, or wear their regalia. But at the same time, non-tribal indigenous people were culturally appropriating them, mocking them. We believe the problem also comes from racism. The colonists and imperialists created races to separate everyone by separation by race, religion, and prejudice to conquer and divide the people. If we are busy fighting each other, people in power can do what they want. Our world is taught in schools, in movies, and media that the American Indian no longer exists or that we are less of a people. Before the civil rights movement, when everyone was divided by black and white, Indians were told they could go anywhere or use, they couldn't go anywhere or use anything and to stay outside with the dogs. Now their children are instilled with their parents' beliefs, my generation, then their children with my children. We are taught in schools and the Boy Scouts watching sports on TV, like the Redskins, Chiefs, and Indians, and during Halloween that it is okay to mock cultural appropriate American Indians, and no, you are not honoring us. American Indian women were sexually objectified due to the Pocahontas costume trend. The last Indian war ended November 26, 2016. 
during the Dakota Access Pipeline fight where militarized weapons were brought to subjugate the peaceful and prayerful Indian people, protecting their homeland territory, crying out to the government to uphold their treaty rights, our treaties as stated in the constitution, our supreme law of the land. The Standing Rock Nation also wanted to protect the water for 17 million people below their waterway. And now today, there's an ongoing struggle with line three. And the indigenous people. What is also a problem today are stereotypes and prejudices. Throughout history, we are told that the Indians love their fire water. So we are seen as drunks. Statistically, this is not the case. Because our women are sexualized with costumes, movies, media, and porn, we are seen as promiscuous. Because we are viewed as savages and wild, our children are believed to have run away. So when we make a reported domestic violence, sexual assault, or that our people are missing, we are told to wait 48 hours. They will come back. They are out partying and they are with their boyfriends and they ran away. When we are found being sex trafficked, women are seen as willful prostitutes rather than victims. What else is the problem? Criminal jurisdiction in our country is very complicated. Jurisdiction may depend on the race of the victim and the offender, as well as the type of crime being committed. This may be also why law enforcement is slow to act and slow to collect data. Um, an example is, well, my mom, she was a victim of domestic violence. And uh, when the police finally showed up when we live on the reservation, they didn't know what, who had jurisdiction, whether it was tribal, whether it was the city or whether it was the state. And by the time they figured it out, because while well, it was the tribal, um, well, the tribal policeman was the perpetrator's um, brother-in-law. So, you know, he didn't want to do nothing. So we had to move off reservation to um, try to seek protection. What else is the problem? We know there is not a central database in reporting our missing and murdered NCIC numbers, but they too are not receiving all the information. The initial intake of a missing person, they don't always categorize the race correctly. Are they listed as mixed race? And it doesn't get categorized with Native Americans or American Indians. Abigail Echohawk discovered that the King County law enforcement miscategorized the N option. They were using an outdated system, the N stood for Negro and not Native American. What are some of the reasons for missing and murdered? Domestic violence, violence against women's act and native women reported, on native women reported that four or five native women will experience violence in their lifetime. Three and four immigrant women will experience domestic violence. Sexual assault, one in two native women will experience sexual assault. The Bureau of Justice Statistics, United States Department of Justice and Office of Justice Programs said that 70% of these cases are caused by non-Native people. And in a, like another study, it said about 96% of sexual assault perpetrators are non-tribal. 
2005 to 2009, the U.S. prosecuting attorney failed to prosecute 67% of these cases. Um, so it's my understanding that the prosecuting attorneys, uh, they have a point system. And um, they use that point to you know, escalate their, their position, um, you know, to try to get a better job or better pay of employment. But if their points are low, then it's most likely that they won't receive the higher position or the higher pay. So they decline to prosecute some of these cases so they won't want to um, get a negative point scale. So we're looking at changing that. Man camps. Some of you may have seen the movie Wind River about an Indian woman being murdered at a man camp. When we think of man camps, we think of pipelines, like the one just north of us, the Trans-Canadian um, used to be the Kinder Morgan pipeline, and they are expecting 500 camps that hold 1,000 men in each camp, and that's just north of us. Here's some statistics on the study. Other pipelines that are being put in in our Indian country are reaching out to Biden to shut down as the XL pipeline is halted temporarily. Um, maybe that's not true because the XL pipeline was shut down, um, but the Dakota Access pipeline has halted temporarily. Um, line three is crossing from Canada to Wisconsin. We also have mining camps um, in our area. We have the LNG man camps and the offshore drilling camp. And uh, we also have um, the immigration camps when they bring up you know, single men from Mexico to help. Um, farm their farms. So here in Washington, our man camps are hidden. We have LNG and other structures being created, bringing in single men living in motels and RV parks. We have immigration camps uh, that house migrant farm workers from other countries. Most of them are, are single men. We have military camps as seen along I-5 at Lewis McCord Base. Another high-risk area is our I-5 corridor that stretches from Mexico to Canada along the coastline. A lot of cartel and other sex traffickers travel up and down I-5. They also like to target truck stops and sex traffic women. What may be considered as sex trafficking? Uh, Child Protective Services, we discovered CPS sometimes loses children. Their placements who are predators may slip by their background checks. Placements are not held accountable when children report sexual abuse or rape. States and tribes are not always following the Indian Child Welfare Act. Children also time out at 18 years and feel displaced with nowhere to go even though vulnerable to sex trafficking. Pimps are both sexes. Please watch your children with their internet use. Pimps and sex traffickers troll the internet and target our children and teenagers. Gangs and cartels, our youth are taught to join gangs so they feel protected or like they belong. Gangs brainwash them to do sexual acts for money, alcohol, or drugs. Within the family, family members sex traffic their family members for alcohol, drugs, or to help pay bills. Survival sex from our houseless children coming out of CPS, runaways, our low income people. Peer-to-peer, -peer, trusted friends being sex trafficked may entice our children and glorify it to get them to do it. 
independent. People may have sex trafficked for many years. They feel like that. It's the only thing that they're capable of doing. So they venture off on their own. And this is where, because pimps may be territorial, forcing them to receive a cut of their profits. Exploitation of boys, LGBTQ plus two spirits youth. It's not always our women and girls being sex trafficked. In Portland, just below Washington, they are known as Boy Town, a populated place to buy men and boys. Exploitation by other forms of sex trading, stripping, webcam, Playboy, or you know other uh, nude magazines, online social sites, gaming sites, um, even bikini baristas. Native Americans make up 2% of the population, but 54% of sex trafficking victims in the United States. Through our MMIW movement, now the word is out that reservations don't prosecute non-tribal members. Now they have become high risk areas for our people. Sex offenders are moving on or close to reservations too. And again, there's 29 tribes. Other high risk areas for our people are tribal casinos, social gatherings like powwows, big games, canoe journey, radio events, basketball, baseball tournaments, potlatches, to name a few. So please, when you attend these areas with your children, please keep a close eye on them. Other reasons why natives are missing, mental health. Due to HIPAA laws, families are not told when a loved one is in the hospital or psychiatric hospital. Addiction, some people spiral into their addictions. They are too ashamed to return home. Arrest, law enforcement doesn't always look in jail rosters when women are reported missing. CPS, the families are not always notified when children are removed from their parents. Immigration camps, our relatives from the South are being put in immigration concentration camps. Thousands of women and children are being reported as missing. Other reasons why natives are murdered. Black market organ harvesting. Indigenous people have a blood type O that's transferable to other blood types. Hate crimes. Police brutality. Native Americans have the highest rates of police brutality. Gang violence. Cases are put on the back burner. Vehicular assault. Families often don't receive justice when a non-Native hits a Native person. Neglect. CPS or medical neglect. How to help. Learn and acknowledge whose original tribal territory you are on. Learn tribal protocols, traditions, and culture, both off and on reservation. Learn how to be a respectful ally by listening and supporting, not leading unless asked to do so. Learn how a tribe, state, county, city, our social service program tracks missing and murdered indigenous people. Share pictures, posts, articles, and websites that have information about missing and murdered indigenous people. Be sensitive to families of missing and murdered indigenous people. Families do not always want to talk about their missing or murdered loved ones because of their cultural beliefs or because they are mourning or because you are not a trusted friend or family member. If you are involved in the media, if you are a journalist or an organization, ask the family of a missing or murdered person if you may use their missing or murdered loved one's information. Contact local 
political representatives. The VAWA Act, support VAWA 21. This will provide better protection for tribes and tribal members. VAWA helps all women, including trans and immigrant women, renews almost every year. The Not Invisible Act passed and it creates a commission of tribal representatives to write a report on how to reduce violent crimes on tribal land. The Survive Act, it passed, it creates resources and funding to address violence against Native women. The Savannah Act passed, named after a missing Native pregnant mother where the baby was cut out of her womb and her body was dumped into a river. This aims to increase communication and coordination between federal, tribal, state, and city law enforcement. Here in Washington State, um, missing murdered Indigenous women in Washington, uh, myself, helped pass one of the first um, missing and murdered Indigenous women bills in the United States, this HB 2951. The bill study ways to increase state resources for reporting and identifying missing Native Americans. And uh, we didn't want to wait another year for the report to be released and, and waited for the next step. So um, right away, we, we passed um, House Bill 1713. And this create, created two Washington State Patrol uh, tribal liaisons to work with tribal urban Indian organization victims and families. And this bill started out as a task for force bill, but um, Washington State didn't have it in their funding to fund that. So we dropped it down from a 23 plus person task force to two liaisons, one in Eastern Washington and one in Western Washington. And they've been very helpful. Um, they, they've done some um, cultural training with uh, some of the Washington State Patrol officers. And um, they're also supposed to come up with protocols that law enforcement are supposed to follow when taking a missing persons report. And this year, 2021-22, um, uh, please help support our House Bill 1571, the Bring Them Home Bill. And um, this is sponsored by Gita Mossberger. Uh, she's with the 14th District Legislation um, by the Yakima Nation. And uh, when we did the uh, initial bill, we were able to get permission from um, Jody Gowdy with uh, the Yakima Nation, who was tribal council at that time. And these other bills are just um, like other steps to that initial bill. This bill will give families the right to pray over their deceased loved ones. Um, so when they find a body there, um, families want to pray and and smudge and stuff where the, the body lays, but please don't let them. Um, so when a body is found with this bill, they'll give them a right to pray, but due to um, forensics and stuff, they won't be able to, to smudge the area. Um, so they'll be giving a list of stuff that um, they shouldn't do so they won't disrupt the investigation. This bill will also create an Amber Alert called Red Thunder Alert for Missing American Indians. Um, this bill will also make sex trafficking hotline information accessible to high risk areas. So we'll be giving like pamphlets and even possibly putting up billboards along the, the freeway and highways. Um, when the people will see that, um, you know, when they go to a safe area, they'll call the number and, and you know, we'll come get them. 
Um, this bill will also create funding to help with the healing center for sex traffic survivors. Uh, missing and murdered indigenous women of Washington. Uh, these are days to look out for that we usually um, support and help bring awareness and educate. Uh, May 5th is the United States Day of Awareness for Missing Native Americans. October 4th is Canada's Day of Action for Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls. And during these days, May 5th and October 4th, um, our First Nation sisters usually also uh, throw solidarity events. Um, February 14th is also a day of remembrance for our missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. You could follow us on Facebook, look for our logos. We have a page, but we also have three groups. And the group that gets the most attention is our, our women women's group. Um, you could also find us on Instagram. Here's a uh, handle. We also have a website. Also, look out for these hashtags. And our hashtag is MMIWW. Another thing that we are currently doing is a free Madison George campaign. Madison George is a 27 year old Native American mother from the Cabo Reservation. She has been jailed for over one year for defending herself against a white man who raped and threatened her life. Uh, right now she's facing 17 years in federal pr prison, which is a thousand miles away from her baby, family, and tribe. We are asking the U.S. Department of Justice to drop the charges. You can learn more um, at change.org slash freemadisongeorge. Uh, you can also find Free Madison George hashtag. And um, she has a Facebook, an Instagram uh, website, and you could also donate. And um, in the 1970s, you may remember the, the Yvonne uh, Wanro, Wanro decision. Um, Yvonne Swan Wanro, she's also a Kabul tribal member. And, um, and she also um, murdered a perpetrator and um, she was also uh, possibly convicted in life in prison. But um, through the help with women rights activists everywhere, um, you know, she didn't see a day in prison. And now there's a one row instruction that has helped not only our um, Native American people, but, you know, all women who face, um, you know, face the, the time where they feel like they have to um, stand their ground and defend themselves or their loved ones. And um, Madison George, you know, that, that case came really close to mine uh, when I heard about her case. And um, so hopefully, you know, you'll see more, you'll, you'll help spread the word because, you know, um, the media doesn't like to cover our indigenous people. It's like we're invisible. And um, so hopefully we can get the word out because, you know, I, I also connect this case with the, the VAWA 2021 and, um, you know, uh, our tribal members, you know, we felt like we could really depend on law enforcement and that we were able to arrest non-tribal members. Maybe we wouldn't feel like we had to put it in our own hands to um, protect ourselves. And another thing that I believe um, with Madison that it all stems well, from systematic racism. Uh, Native American women are in prisons at six times the rate of white women. The number of Native Americans confined in jail is four times the national average. 
Native Americans are confined to federal prisons at 38% above the national average. And activists believe there is an undeclared war against our women because we are the life givers, the caretakers of their children. Activists also believe that the imperial government are still after indigenous land and the annihilation of their women is the annihilation of their indigenous people, their traditions and cultures, as well as their connection with Mother Earth. Without the original inhabitants of lands will leave the government to continue to take land and extract its natural resources. Indigenous people are the original stewards and caretakers of our Mother Earth. Again, hashtag free Madison George. Um, you could also write Madison a letter or send her some books. Go to um, Steve Graham's uh, site to, if you wanted to send her something. Um, also Facebook, Instagram. Thank you, Earth Mother. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for taking the time and patience to listen. And, um, so if anybody has any questions. And, and I think people can, can sh um, ask the questions in the comments, and we can come back to, to, to answer them. I know what, somebody asked for um, the, the actual um, like some of the slides because they couldn't see them. So so oh. I know I put that that you would if they wanted to send an email. And maybe you can put your email for them. But I just wanted to share before we end the, the presentation. And I know Morningstar was gonna um maybe offer a song. Um, but this is Tina Marie Finley. And I just wanted to share that picture um with her. And then this is her. Um, the picture that they put on, you know, the t-shirts for, and I wanted to share that um, before we ended today. And just to, you know, like maybe somewhere down the road, we'll be able to do a presentation where, you know, we can, we can put all of their pictures, you know, and, and so I know throughout, you know, going on the MMIW bike run, you know, there's so many, you know, 300 and, and 20 names on that RV right now, but we know there's more. And so, you know, just trying to get their pictures out there and trying to get um, that information out there is important. So, um, but I'll let Morningstar, were you gonna offer a song to end us? I know we're a little over time and, you know, usually we keep it within an hour, but I still, I, you know, that was a powerful presentation, Earth Feather, first time I've seen your presentation and it was very well done. So Liam Lemsh in Chaspa'u's Telechas, thank you from my heart. And, and Morningstar, would you end us in a good way, please? White Hustle Hulk, um, I'm coming, I'm uh, talking from the sacred um, ancestral lands of the Squat Cedar Chad, the Squally Ops and the Spialapodge, um, the Medicine Creek people, Medicine Creek Treaty people. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, turn off my camera at this time. And I wanna share this song that was written by uh, Anton, Anton George from the Lummi Nation. And when I sing this song, I'm asking that you close your eyes and pray for all the women and all the people, all the children, all the men that are still somewhere in the water, in the mountains, in the dirt, in the, in the, on a plane, on a boat. People are being tortured. They're being slaved. Their, their bodies are probably scattered all over the place. We just don't know the depths of this. So when I sing this song, the song, I'm singing it for them. So I'm asking that you, that you please stay when I sing this song. Yeah. 
Thank you from our hearts for joining us today, for being with us and and for sharing your hearts with us and with all of our, our people who watch from the Native Wellness Institute. And that ends our power hour for today. Oh, Lim Lamsh.